بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing on with علامة عبيد بن عبد الله جابري حفظ الله تعالى his uh, advice regarding the mannerisms of differing between أهل السنة والجماعة and he mentioned that the root causes of this phenomenon usually go back to two main causes and he mentioned the first cause is due to those people who are ignorant and begin to uh, just beginning to really sh practice their religion you know having the signs of iltizam or, or, or that they're adhering to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but then they involve themselves in intricate matters that they have no right to do so, that they don't have the knowledge, the ability, the fiqh, the hikmah to deal with these issues, the understanding, the wisdom, uh, etc. And that they involve themselves in following up the mistakes of others, other people of Ahl Sunnah specifically, refuting them, following up their tapes, trying to find mistakes, and doing their best to propagate those mistakes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and protect us from these characteristics. So he said that was the first reason. Moving on to the second reason, the Shaykh said, Hafid Allah ta'ala, secondly, he said the deep-seated ignorance. So this is the second reason why, or the second category, or second one of the two main causes of why people fall into uh, excessive differing between Ahl Sunnah. So he said, secondly, the deep-seated ignorance of the causes behind jarh wa ta'deel, meaning the science of criticizing and praising individuals, which is a science, a branch of the sciences of hadith. He said, the ignorance of which errors can be excused and which cannot. So meaning that they have ignorance of the science and who can be excused and who cannot. And then they indulge in these, uh, this very high level of knowledge. In fact, it's not a light level. They involve themselves in issues of jarwa ta'deel and speaking about these things with, without the right to do so and without the knowledge to do so. And then he said, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, in addition to this, taking general rulings, <coughs> taking general rulings and applying them over specific individuals without taking into consideration the different conditions of individuals, whether they have knowledge or are ignorant or other issues included in the conditions and, uh, and those things would uh, prevent concerning this affair. I will also add a third cause. And the Sheikh said, I will add a third cause. Half of the Allah Ta'ala. He said, it is the ignorance, rather the deliberate avoidance of the principles of legislative policy in studying the benefits and harms that are legislatively acknowledged giving precedence to what is, uh, deserves precedence and making secondary what deserves to be secondary. And from the greatest issues that needs to be given precedence to is unifying the ranks of Ahl Sunnah, exerting efforts in guiding Allah's creation to the truth, repelling harms from them, and removing any hardship they are going through in their religion and worldly affairs. There are other reasons that lead to the propagation of this dangerous phenomenon, such as thinking negatively, evil of other people's actions, while other intentions could be found. Extremism and being obstinate to some scholars, meaning to blind follow, to asab, while suspecting and accusing others. So attacking the scholars and blindly following just a particular scholar or group of scholars. This is also a dangerous characteristic the Shaykh mentioned, Hafid Allah Ta'ala. Then he said, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, for this reason, I will provide my brothers, may Allah grant them success in this affair, some extremely beneficial statements by a Shaykh Allama Muhammad Nasruddin al Albani, may Allah have mercy on him in his book Salat al Tarawih. So, Ayyul Habba, thus ends what was translated by our brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him and raise him up and forgive him for any of his shortcomings and forgive us as well. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen, Abu Abdul Wahid, Hafidullah Ta'ala. And this is something very beneficial that I hope we can take into heart and begin to rectify 
the affairs of Ahl Sunnah so we can go forth and share the beautiful guidance of Islam with all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. And even Ahl Sunnah, we want guidance for Ahl Bid'ah because those are our Muslim brothers, especially if they're in the fold of Islam, if they don't have Bid'ah, Mukaffara, which takes them out of the fold of Islam. That we don't talk about individuals for the sake of talking about them, but we advise them and we speak about them to refute their mistakes and so that the community is protected from their harm. And this brings about a greater benefit for the community. And this is legislated by Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Minhaj, the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah. So we ask that Allah the Almighty accepts our good and forgives our evil and blesses us with to adhere to the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam.